we're back where it all began in beautiful New Haven at Ferraro's Market. New Haven Institution has been gracious enough to let us come back and roam their aisles and put together for you guys today what will be me shopping without a budget. So although we're not looking to waste any money unnecessarily, I'm going to take you through the store today and basically show you guys how I shop on a weekly basis. Me just basically what I'm eating right now and show you guys what it takes to feed me <laughs> with no budget, no constraints. So come on in, let's get started. So anytime I go grocery shopping, I always like to start with the meat stuff first. On my list today, I've got chicken and fish. Those are my two main protein sources, as well as eggs. One of the reasons I like to get the meat first, so I can put it in the bottom of the cart, so it's not sitting on top of anything else, just mainly for sanitary purposes. So, plus it's kind of the foundation of the diet. So let's go get that first. All right. First on the list is chicken, breast. Um, got just around six pounds, which just so you know, I'm gonna pick up food for about four days. Um, Cause generally when I cook, I like to prep about four days worth of food at a time. Uh, at least currently. Sometimes I'll do longer uh, stretches uh, if I'm trying to produce, you know, prepare more at a time. But right now it's about four days. And I go through about a pound of prepared chicken a day, you know, eight ounces a meal. Um, so over four days, I know I'm gonna need four prepared pounds. So you know you're gonna lose some uh, weight when you're cooking it. So instead of picking up just four pounds, which if I did, I'd come up short, pick up about five and a half, maybe about six pounds. So here it is. I'm gonna grab some cod, maybe about four pounds. We grabbed uh, about two and a half pounds of salmon too. This I'm gonna have for one meal each day. So now that we've got the chicken and the fish, I'm just gonna go get some eggs. Uh, Cause that will be my final protein source. Let's go see what we can find. You guys take notice, this right here is the Frank McGrath section. All the workings of a world-class physique and big forearms. <laughs> eggs. Well, these guys always have great egg prices. You can get a dozen large eggs for 99 cents which is the same price they were, geez, probably three years ago when we did the last big on a budget here. Um, but rather than grabbing large eggs, I'm actually gonna grab jumbos because having, say, six of them every morning, I want a little bit more protein per egg. Still, at a buck 85 a dozen, that's pretty damn good. No cracks, nice looking eggs too. So I'm gonna have six of these every morning, so Two dozen's enough to get me through four days. Next up on the list is rice. Now I have rice at about three meals each day. I think that's about eight ounces of rice I use a day. That's, you know, dry, uncooked weight. So realistically for four days, I only need about two pounds of rice, but this is really about the smallest they've got, um, which is a five pound thing, but it's only four bucks, so I might as well get it. Um, cheap, easy. I'm going to show you guys at home how I do it. All right, next we need a fat source. For me, I use a ton of olive oil. It's fairly economical. It digests really well. It's healthy for you. Studies even show that people that consume more olive oil burn more body fat. I know a lot of times people say, how do you know what's a good olive oil to pick? Generally speaking, you don't really know what you're getting. All olive oils, pretty much, when you put them in a cold environment, like if you put them in the refrigerator, they'll congeal, okay? That's because of the amount of, it, the more polyunsaturated fat, the less temperature sensitive it is, meaning you could get it colder and colder and colder and it won't congeal. As you guys know, saturated fat is solid at a room temperature. But if you heat it, a lot of times it will melt. Monounsaturated fat, being closer to saturated, will be more temper temperature sensitive meaning if it's just slightly cold, it'll start to congeal. When you buy olive oil, you want olive oil that is higher. The reason you're buying it is because it's a monounsaturated fat. You want olive oil 
that's higher in mono unsaturated fat than polys. You can tell that by looking at some of them, like here, you come in right here, and this one you can see it starting to congeal at the bo bottom of the bottle versus this one, which is perfectly clear. Obviously, they're both at the same temperature. That tells me that this one has more monounsaturated fat in it. And to be totally honest, half a liter for $4 is not a bad price. So I'm gonna go with this one. I found over the years that ones that congeal easier taste better. They have a richer, creamier taste. Um, so take that to the bank. All right, now that we've got all this protein and we've got a fat source, we need some veggies. For me, that's a very, very important part of my diet. Uh, I would consider it, I don't wanna say equally as important as the protein, but the, really the two go hand in hand. I never really eat a meal with protein or at least uh, animal, you know, like meat. And I never have chicken or fish or steak or anything like that without having veggies in that meal. Um, so with all these veggies, what do you choose? Me, I try to primarily stick to green vegetables, um, knowing that I get a lot of nutrition with them. And even at that, I try to stick more to cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, kale, um, cabbage. A broccoli crown about that size, I'll eat that, about one of those per meal. So if I have broccoli twice a day for four days, I'm gonna need about eight of these. Why cruciferous vegetables? because they fight estrogen. Nobody wants more estrogen. I'm gonna get one other vegetable. I choose kale. Kale being one of the most nutritionally dense foods on the planet. And being a leafy green, it's really great for helping to kind of counter you know, the acidity of the proteins that we eat, keep your digestive tract healthy. Um, it's great for your skin. People don't realize it, but Kale is a really, really potent source of vitamin C, obviously vitamin A, K, just a great vegetable. Um, you know, when I'm getting ready for a contest, I'll eat about a bag of this a day. Right now, probably a bag every two days. So for four days, I'm gonna grab two bags. Next up, I'm gonna grab some lemons. I don't generally use a lot of seasonings or sauces or things like that on my food. But one of the things I really do like is fresh lemon. Uh, so I'll squeeze it sometimes. You know, obviously if I have fish, I'll put it on the fish. Um, when I have veggies, whether it's broccoli or kale, I'll squeeze it on that. Um, and obviously lemons have their own uh, set of health benefits as well. I'm gonna grab a couple containers of strawberries. Ooh, I'm gonna show you guys something that I do with my eggs, strawberries, and some pancake mix, a uh, way that I prep my breakfast in advance. Um, but strawberries I like uh, as opposed to other fruits uh, because they're very, very low in fructose. So they digest really well. And I'll show you later what I do with these. Last thing on our list, pancake mix. I'm gonna show you what this is for when we get back to the house. But basically what I do is I combine six whole eggs in the morning with a about a half a cup of baking mix, like this, um, and some fruit, the strawberries that I picked up. And I make this giant, kind of like a, I guess you would call it like a pancake, um, but it's a way that I can prepare my breakfast in advance to save time and stuff. I go back and forth between gluten-free ones and uh, just ones that use wheat flour. Uh, the selection is a little bit limited. I'm gonna go for this one. This is actually a really good brand, and I know these are gonna taste really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they don't contain any milk, which is something that I avoid. So this will work out perfect. I think we've got everything. So let's go check out, go home, prep this stuff. We ended up spending $115. Now, that's for four days worth of food. So, you know, for a week, you'd be spending just under 230, which is, you know, it's a considerable amount of money. <laughs> but 
in my estimation, I don't think it's terrible. Um, probably the salmon drove the, the cost quite a bit because that's about $10 a pound. You know, the chicken was cheap at about $2.29 a pound, but everything else was fairly cheap. If you were to cut that salmon out and replace it with another meal of chicken, so you probably bring it down to about 170 per week. So I don't know, but that's what I eat. So let's go home, let's prep it, let's go. Now I'm gonna show you what all that food looks like. I'm gonna have a whole day's worth set out for you to show you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the vegetables. Why? Because rather than start with the meats and have to clean the cutting board before you know chopping up the, the veggies, Rather just start with the veggies that went off to wash the cutting board and I can proceed to prep the meats. Smart, right? So I'm gonna start with the broccoli, just chop it up. I try to save as much of the stalk as possible. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty. I know it's kind of ugly, but what's the difference? And we can just kind of get the veggies out of the way right away. Got a pot here. We got some kale. Eating your kale raw is great and all, but it's going to really, really, really fill up your stomach. And if you're a bodybuilder, you know, unfortunately, carbohydrates and proteins are going to, and fats, are going to take precedence over fiber. So you are, you're gonna want to increase the efficiency at which your body's digesting food. Keeping your veggies raw, I don't think is really helping that efficiency. This is just my experience with it. I could be totally wrong here. So now we have the veggies out of the way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, we got fish. We have cod and salmon. I have a couple sheet pans. I'll make this really easy. I'm gonna put them both on sheet pans and put them both in the oven at the same time. Now the cod I broil, okay? But when you put your oven on broil, it's hot. Okay, so the oven gets up to around, you know, 400 or so degrees. The salmon, because I don't need to broil it, I'm gonna put it on the rack below. So it's essentially gonna bake while the other one's broiling. So I can get them both in the oven at the same time because the oven's hot. And then what we can do is we can go on to the chicken. All I'm gonna do with the fish is Put on some oregano. And some parsley. Put that under the broiler. We've got salmon. I'm gonna need four portions out of this. So what I do is I basically go ahead and I pre-score it this will do two things basically it um it's going to help the salmon to cook faster and also it's going to allow me visually to see the portions and once this is done i'll be able to scoop it easier off the skin and put it into containers for later uh consumption when it comes to salmon i like to add dill to it so i just go and just hit it with a little bit of dill I can just go ahead and pop this under the in the oven. So now we've got the chicken. And what I'm gonna do is butterfly it. Helpful hint, when you're cooking the kale, get yourself a pair of tongs, because you can pick it up, turn it. Because the stuff at the bottom is gonna cook quicker. Broccoli's done. I just kind of put it aside with the lid off. I, I cook it till it's just short of being as tender as I want it to be because I know that once it sits, it's gonna to continue to cook a little bit more. So I just place it off to the side and it's gonna to continue to just cook a little bit and it'll be just right when it's done. I'm gonna check on the cod, which actually looks done. Put it off to the side. The salmon's already in there, which I can now bring up to the top shelf. I'll take the oven off a of broil, put it on bake. I'll put it on about 375. 
I added just a little drizzle of olive oil to this chicken. Being that I'm in an off season, it's not, you know, really a big deal right now. This will help to, well, A, it'll help it from sticking to the grill, <laughs> but it'll also help keep it more moist when it's cooking too. It'll help lock in more moisture. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how I make my rice. Anybody who's been following me for a little while knows that I'm a big fan of rice cookers. I'm a big fan of rice as a carbohydrate source. I like it because A, it tastes great. B, it digests really, really well for me. C, it's economical. And when you have a rice cooker, it usually comes with a cup. Now this isn't actually a true cup, as in eight ounces. Um, but you go by this to go with the measurements on the rice cooker bowl. So I'm gonna take one cup of rice. And per day, I do one cup, half cup. One and a half cups, it's eight ounces of uncooked rice. And what I do first is come over and I rinse it off. You just pour it off, the rice still in there fill it up again and now just rinse it until the water runs fairly clear and then I just add water to it add it till it's just right and you do want to use just the right amount of water with rice because if you use too little it's gonna be hard and if you use too much it's gonna be mush and texture is really important with rice. So I'm gonna use three things that I'm, I'm gonna add to this rice to give it flavor. First, I have a curry powder. So I like to use this as kind of a base. I like to add extra cardamom to it and fresh turmeric roots. I don't bother to peel the skin off it or anything. I just use it all. And I just grate it over the bowl. And you could use dried turmeric, but believe me when I tell you the difference between this and the dried stuff, there might as well be two totally different things. And what, aside from giving it a really, really, really nice flavor, this is one of the greatest things for your liver is turmeric. It's great for bringing down inflammation. So what does all that have to do? Anybody who watches, you know, some of my videos and stuff notice that I talk a lot about the liver and liver function. It's incredibly important for bodybuilders because of all the food we consume, everything has to go through the liver. And if your liver's not working as well as it should be, you're not gonna be able to process as much food. So the liver is really the center of digestion. Um, also, your liver is your fat burning organ, okay? So if your liver's not functioning right, you have a harder time burning fat. Just everything looks better and works better when your liver is functioning better. So I have the turmeric in there. I take a teaspoon and I add a teaspoon of curry powder to that. And I add about like three quarters of a teaspoon. Now together, these herbs, spices, roots are really, really good for your digestion and they complement the protein really, really well in that they help to clean the intestines, help to kill bacteria, pathogens. They add a great dimension to your food because um, it really, I think, helps to balance a high protein diet that a lot of us bodybuilders consume. And like I said, it tastes phenomenal. So this stuff is in here, right? That's my rice recipe. All I do is I bring this, I put it in my rice cooker, and I do this the night before, okay? But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna do it today so I can show you what the finished product looks like. So normally I would set the timer the night before so that it's done in the morning, but right now I'm just gonna get it started. I think our salmon is ready. Yeah, definitely. I can tell by poking it. So we've got salmon, cod, broccoli, kale. Next, 
gonna go outside and grill some chicken. All right, all I'm gonna do is throw this chicken on the grill. It's not a ton, so it's gonna fit all at one time. I do use a little bit of non-stick spray. Be careful when you're doing this because sometimes it could catch fire and you don't wanna blow the can up in your hand. So I guess I would just say don't do it at home. I've already flipped it once. Oh yeah, it's done. And as you can see, I use a, a screen here, a rack, so that it doesn't sit in its own juices, which is gross. And this will help it to cool evenly. I'll go inside, I'll cover it with a little bit of foil. And that actually helps keep the texture really, really good. If you have a problem with your chicken drying out, which a lot of people do, right after you cook it, it's important to loosely cover it with some foil and that'll really help to keep the texture really, really good. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys how I prepare my breakfast in advance. Now, each morning I have six whole eggs. But sometimes, I have to be honest, I get sick with eating eggs. They get gross after a while. I'm tired of eating them. Um, so I found a way to not only make them more appetizing, but also prep them in advance. So what I do is I take all the eggs. I've got two dozen here, so that's enough for four mornings. I put them all in this bowl. And then I add four one-half cups. So that's two cups of pancake mix to it. Um, then I also add some like pumpkin pie spice, you know, some cinnamon and stuff like that. Add that to the mix, a little bit of milk, and blend it all up, put it in the pan, um, add some strawberries to it, let it cook, flip it, done. I prep four of those at a time. That will be my breakfast for the next four mornings. This is actually one of the greatest things I ever figured out in the kitchen was how to mass produce breakfast. And I actually stumbled upon it by accident. I was, it was this past year I was traveling to the Arnold, Australia, and I was gonna be on the flight for a long time. And usually, you know, one of my meals a day is eggs. And, you know, sometimes you get tired of eating all the, every meal, chicken, steak, fish. So I wanted to bring eggs, but obviously you can't really bring eggs on a trip. They don't keep very well once you cook them. So doing it like this um, worked out great. So hence the recipe was born. Here we've got all five meals, prepared, plated. This is basically what I eat currently in one day. Um, as you can see, we've got the eggs and pancake mix and strawberries for breakfast, you know, to which I add, you know, just to be most accurate, I add a couple tablespoons of brown rice syrup to that. Got two meals of chicken, rice, broccoli. I've added a tablespoon of olive oil to each of these meals and this meal the cod rice and kale i've also added a tablespoon of olive oil to it so these three meals right here you're getting about roughly 50 60 grams of carbohydrates and a little over 20 grams of fat by the time you add up the chicken and the fat plus the added fat from the olive oil um, breakfast uh, the egg meal and the salmon meal are considerably higher in fat closer to probably just over 30 grams of fat, but again, about 50 grams of protein. Uh, this meal, you can see there's no added carbs in it because um, I don't know, for whatever reason, I just don't have carbs with that meal. I usually don't feel that I need them. And based on the fact that we spent $115 for four days worth of food, that comes out to just under $30 a day, it divided by five meals, just under $6 a meal. So it's not, bank breaking and considering the amount of food and the food quality here again a lot of the cost coming from the fact that we're using salmon and cod which i think the cod was around six or so dollars a pound and the salmon was up around 10. so you know this very a very a diet very similar to this if we were to for example replace the salmon with say some ground turkey thighs would give us a very similar macronutrient profile, just as much protein and uh, just as much fat, 
you know, the farm race salmon, it's, you know, it does have more omega threes, but it does have a considerable amount of omega six as well. So someone looking to replicate this diet on a tighter budget could just basically replace these two protein sources with something else. You know, maybe another meal of chicken. You could repeat this meal if you wanted, um, but a similar structure. So for all you watching, even though maybe you won't, you're not really say the same weight as me, you could look at this structure and you could kind of adapt it to your own needs. I think the main, the take home message is that we could all benefit from being more efficient with our food preparation, preparing food in advance, making sure that we have it when we need it. Find ways to make your food appealing, you know, by adding, you know, spices to the rice and some spices to the breakfast and finding a different way to prepare the eggs. I now take, you know, some things that aren't otherwise very palatable to me or things that I would be tired of. And, um, you know, they're exciting again, and I'm, I look forward to eating it. And this diet right now is very satisfying for me. When I'm pre-contest, I might add another meal. So go from five to six meals. And this is what I'm currently eating every day.